guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video today. If you are new, welcome. My name is Mallory. If you are not new, welcome back. So today's video is a tutorial for this Northern Lights Tumbler. There's not a whole lot of glitter going on here. I used a lot of mica powders in this one. Um, I've kind of been intimidated by the Northern Lights Tumblers. There's so many different techniques. I wasn't really sure where to start. But I happened to be scrolling on TikTok one night and it came across an amazing 60 second tutorial from Autumn Bell. I'll be sure to link the video in the description so you guys can check it out as well. And she just made it look really easy. So I knew that I had to finally try one for myself. I'll show you guys step by step what I did to recreate this one. I switched it up a little bit from hers. Um, a little bit different but fairly same process. So if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comment section for me. I have a couple of discount codes for you guys as well in the description. And I think that's it. All right, so I'm starting with a 20 ounce skinny that's been sanded and prepped with a flat black spray paint. I've got about 10 milliliters of epoxy mixed up and this assortment of mica powders that I found on Amazon. I'm gonna be using a black and a blue at first and I'm just gonna start by adding a small amount to that epoxy. You can always come back and add more, but you can't take it away, and these mica powders are very pigmented, so you just need a little bit. So a little bit of blue at first, and then a little bit of black, and the only reason I'm mixing these colors is because I don't want a solid black. I kinda wanna see you know, all the different colors of that night sky in the Northern Lights. So mix it really well, and at this point I decided I think I wanted to add a little bit of purple. I'm kind of going for just like a purplish blue shimmery color, if that makes sense. You could just do black, you could just do your painted base, you don't have to do the mica powders, I just wanted a little bit of shimmer and that pearl look. So mix these colors really well. Again, you can come back and add more. It wasn't as pigmented as I wanted it. So I just repeated that process a little bit more blue, a little bit more black, and then mix it really well. And I'll show you guys a close up so you can kind of get an idea of the color that I'm talking about and how you can see all those different shimmers in the mica powders. So from here, I'm just gonna apply this to the tumbler like you would normally apply your epoxy. Um, if you feel like you don't have enough, the epoxy goes a long way. So again, I mixed up 10 milliliters and because I added the mica powders, it was getting a little bit thick. So I just came in with my heat gun to warm up that epoxy and help it spread a little bit more easily. So make sure Everything is nice and smooth. Try and get rid of those lines. Let it spin for four to six hours. Obviously hit it with your torch to pop those air bubbles. Let it spin, let it cure, and then you'll be ready to move in to the next step. So here it is after it's cured, and I've mixed up a very, very small amount of epoxy, like five milliliters, and I'm gonna use my heat gun to warm up the epoxy and warm up the cup. Not super hot, but just warm, because I'm using a very thin amount of epoxy, and the warmer the cup is, the easier this is going to spread. So out of the five milliliters, I really ended up only using about half of that. You want a really thin coat for this because you don't want your mica powders to be really absorbed into that epoxy, if that makes sense. So spread it around, make sure it's nice and even, get the bottom really well and make sure there's no lines in it and then you'll be ready to move on to like the swirls in the mica powders. So these are like a magical blue, magical violet, and magical green. And you can see that they're kind of like that pearlescent cream colored. And the darker the base, the more vibrant these colors are gonna be. So when you put them on this white paper, they don't look very vibrant. 
but the darker the base, the more you're gonna see that color. So I'm just gonna start by putting a very small amount onto this piece of paper, and I've got this like rainbow looking makeup brush. I don't know if you know about makeup brushes, you probably know what kind of brush this is. I just found this in my stash, but I'm just gonna kind of dip it into that mica powder and dab it on to that epoxy. So remember, this cup has a wet coat of epoxy on it. And you don't want a lot of mica powder, but you're just dabbing it in your swirl design. So like little tiny swirls, that's all you're doing. <laughs> Just dab it on there, you don't want a lot, and that's why you wouldn't want a thick coat of epoxy because it would just absorb all of that mica powder and it wouldn't really sit on top like it is now. So we're just gonna start with one color and then come in with our other color. And you can see you can see the colors now. You can see that blue showing up, you can see the purple showing up on that darker base. So we're just gonna use a blue, a purple, and a green. You could use whatever colors you want and just kind of make that swirl pattern. There's no right or wrong way. We are focusing just on the top of the cup. I don't want too many colors on the bottom because that's where we're gonna apply our tree line. But once you're kind of happy with where your colors are, you're gonna take this flat paintbrush and you're just gonna drag it lightly from the top to the bottom. So you don't wanna push really hard. Those colors are gonna start blending and that's what you want. It might be a little scary at first, but trust the process, I promise. It all comes together. So drag it from the top to the bottom, blend all those colors. If you feel like you need to come back in with a little bit more mica powder to help blend, you can. I kind of started dabbing the colors together at this point, kind of mixing the blue and the green, and just added a few more spots, and then repeated it with that flat brush dragging from the top to the bottom. You do wanna make sure that you're soaking your brushes in acetone afterwards, otherwise that epoxy is gonna dry on it and you won't be able to use them again, so don't forget to do that. So when you're happy with how it looks, how the colors are, you're gonna put it on your turner and you're just gonna let it spin. You're gonna let it cure and then immediately go in to another coat of epoxy. So I mixed up about 15 milliliters for this. I only ended up using about 10. Once I applied that coat, I hit it with a torch to pop any air bubbles and I coming in with these little holographic stars and I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle them on the top. Not a lot, you don't want overkill. I think the main focus of this cup is the mica powders and those colors. So just a few sprinkles of these various stars to add some dimension. I did feel like it needed a little bit more glitter though. So I'm using this um, super fine kind of opaque color and just sprinkling it kind of in the same direction as the way the lines from those mica powders are going. Not a lot, just a little, and just on the top of the cup. So we let that spin, we let it cure completely, and then we were ready to sand the bottom of the cup. We're gonna be painting our tree line, so we wanna make sure that the bottom of the cup or wherever we're applying our stencil is completely smooth, otherwise those imperfections will show up. So sand the bottom really well, and then I printed the tree line just using my Silhouette Cameo, and we're going to apply it to the bottom of the cup and then remove the tree line and paint that stencil, if that makes sense. Um, you could just apply vinyl, I just didn't wanna worry about making sure those seams lined up, and I think this is a crisper, cleaner look. So, I applied the transfer tape to the tree line and I'm reverse weeding it. So instead of just pulling those trees out because of all those intricate pieces, I was afraid that I would lose some of them. So I stuck the transfer tape on it and I'm just pulling the, the decal away from it, if that makes sense. I'm probably not, probably not articulating that well, but you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just doing the opposite of what a decal would be. So this is gonna be our stencil. 
So once I have removed all of those tree lines, I'm gonna apply that paper backing to the back of it just to make sure that nothing sticks to it. It'll be my guide now and give it a rough measurement around the cup and just line it up on the bottom and wrap it all the way around the cup, clean up your edges. It doesn't need to be perfect because that's the beauty of painting this. You can fix those edges so those tree lines match up perfectly and you'll never see a seam. So remove all of your excess. Here I'm just fixing up where those tree lines meet and I'm gonna cover the top of it just to prevent any of that black spray paint from getting on our stars or anything and take it outside, give it a good spray with a flat black spray paint and then come in and remove all of those stencils. And you'll be left with really clean, crisp lines. The bottom is completely covered and again, you don't see any of those seams from the vinyl. So it's a bit tedious removing all these little pieces, but you know, it took a whole 10 to 15 minutes and then I was ready to move into our final coats of epoxy. I ended up doing two more coats on this. Um, I believe each coat was a roughly 10 to 15 milliliters. Let it cure, obviously, six to eight hours in between each coat. And if you wanted to apply a decal, now would be the time. I thought it was really pretty as it is and I couldn't decide what I wanted to put on it, so I left it just as it was. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. If you end up creating something like this, I would love to see it. Please feel free to tag me on social media and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.